Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 20th of October, 2014, and this is episode 100 triple digits. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Was your week really busy? My week, my week was so busy. From Wednesday evening through Saturday, there were kids things, which took up all of my spare time. On Wednesday, we do this library thing. It's a six-week program. They give us books to take home, and then they feed us, and we discuss the books the following week. So that is... It's nice because it gets Gabriel interacting with other kids about reading, which is really cool, and they have a separate place for preschool age kids to go, so Mara has a friend, kind of, except they are both little girls who, um, who are kind of like, mm, I don't know if I want to be your friend, but maybe. On Thursday, my job had trick-or-treating for kids, and I woke up Thursday morning and I was like, mm, I should probably make Gabriel's costume. I've been planning to do it for two months because he wanted to be a dragon again, and his mask from last year got destroyed sometime in February, I think, because he just wore it so much that it just fell apart. So I did that on Thursday, and then we did trick-or-treating. On Friday, Gabriel's school had a fall festival, which had a lot of stuff. In the gymnasium, some bouncy houses were set up. Um, there were four of them, and it cost $5 to get wristbands for unlimited jumping for the kids, so we obviously did that. And then the cafeteria had some games and, like, ring toss and things like that. So they had some games and a bake sale and food, like Italian ices and um, pizza, hot dogs, walking tacos, lots of things. There was a haunted hallway, which we didn't go see. We looked at the, um, the doors. They had a door decorating contest. So I have a picture of the kids standing in front of Gabriel's classroom door. And there was a book sale in the library, so each kid picked out a book, and we picked out a book from Gabriel's classroom list, which, oh, this is so cute. He, um, the librarian checked us out from a book sale, and I thought she would just take the wish list book and, you know, hold it in a stack and then deliver them all on Monday. No, she took a, she gave us a little tag to fill out, um, I think it said something about the book sale. I don't know. Like a little book thing, label. Do you know what I'm talking about? So I put Gabriel's teacher's name and Gabriel's name on it and put it inside the book. And then instead of her keeping it, she was like, okay, and just give this to your teacher on Monday. And I was like, that is kind of cute that the, the kids get to actively participate in creating the classroom library. This is crazy. As we were leaving the gymnasium, a kid asked his mom or grandma or something if they could go to the book fair. And she was like, no, I'm not buying you a book. That is insane. I just, like, I cannot even fathom. I guess because my mom didn't buy us a lot of things, like a lot of toys and stuff when we were little, but always books whenever we asked. And I don't buy my kids a lot of toys and things, but always books. <gasps> and a book order came in last week. My kids were so cute. They immediately sat down right after Gabriel got home from school and started reading books. It was so cute. Anyway, that's a lot of life. Oh, no, wait, I have more life. Saturday was trick-or-treating at Steve's grand or Steve's parents' campground. They, they have beggar's night. It lasts two hours, and the kids come home with way too much candy. So I let them each pick out ten pieces that they could have over the next several days, and then the rest is going 
out to kids who come around trick-or-treating here or going to school with Gabriel after Halloween because the teacher rewards kids with candy occasionally for good behavior and she can distribute it as she sees fit. And then the last life thing is Steve had an MRI on Tuesday and he has no cartilage in his feet. And that is what is causing all of these problems. The nurse who called him told him that his feet look like they belong to someone who's about 100. So we don't know what the treatment plan is because he goes to the doctor tomorrow for his follow-up to the MRI. And I guess we'll figure it out then. Finisher Frogget is going strong and you guys are amazing. There are so many entries. I'm really, really, really excited about it. And I really, my favorite is the frogged objects because obviously the finished objects are beautiful. They're amazing. I love all of them. But the frogged projects have stories. Most of them have like a little blurb. And I really enjoy reading that. Not that I want you all to have to frog, because I don't. It would be amazing if every knitting slash crocheting project you made was perfect. See, I hate, I hate this mirroring thing because I feel like this side is falling off, but it's not really. I think it's just the way that my body is turned. And it's just, I don't know. I'm trying to fix it and I'm not fixing it. I'm making it worse. So I'm going to stop. Anyway. I don't ever want you to have to frog, but I the the stories are interesting because I know what it's like to have to frog something that you put in a lot of time, like those gothic spire socks. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. <sighs> anyway, prizes for that. There are three of them. The first is the skein of yarn from Daisy Knits. It's the Wicked Cool Colorway in the Hardy 2.0 base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and this color is amazing. There is a bag from Kitchen Counter Crafter. It has a snap on the top, and then it's got these um, kind of like snap bracelets, which keep it closed. It's got a snap. It comes with this cute handmade card and some locking stitch markers. And this bag is really awesome. Like you might be like, mm, it's only a snap, what's that gonna do? But it keeps it really closed. Like those stitch markers should be able to fall out because they're the packaging is smaller than the openings on either side, but the the whatever this is keeps it closed really well. I love this bag so much. Oh, I want to keep it, but I won't, but I want to. Oh, it's so cute. And it has this lovely little wrist strap thing so you can knit and walk at the same time or crochet and walk at the same time, which I love. And the final prize is you can choose a giftable pattern from Ravelry or I will make you something using stash yarn. That's not the side stash on. This is, uh, which is my personal favorite when I get to make things for people, but some people would rather have the pattern and that's totally cool. Um, the dates for that is finishing or frogging something between September 1st through October 31st. The tag is BPHFOF14 and I have a project for this that I don't know if it'll get finished on time because I'm cutting it pretty close now. This is the Nightingale by Vintage Pearl, and this is where I was last week, so not a ton of progress, but hey, more than there was previous to this month. I am on the gusset, which is exciting. The yarn that I'm using is a yarn well spun, is that correct? Yes, in a Wind in the Willows colorway and Knit Picks Stroll in black, Stroll Fingering. It's just very, I like the pattern. 
I like the socks. It's just very, very intense. I have to look at the pattern at the chart every row because it's different every row to make this this nightingale. And I don't, I haven't had a lot of time for focus, for focused knitting. I've been able to knit, just not like bleh, zoom in. So hopefully you're doing better with your project than I'm doing with mine. And if not, we will, um, we will not finish together, but at least we've made more progress, right? It's not languishing quite so much. I have a finished object, which is kind of like two finished objects in one. The chamomile connection merino silk that I had finished last week and the ply of Polworth that I was spinning to go with it. I finished that yarn, spun it, plied it. I ended up having to use a little bit of alpaca and a little bit of American wool to extend the blue ply. Though they weren't blue, they're both different shades of brown, but I don't think it is really a problem. I finished spinning that, I plied it, and I crocheted a big, chunky infinity cowl using it. So it looks like this, and it's big enough to go around once like a scarf, or twice like this, or even... Oh, we do that. Or even three times if you really just needed something really close to your face and comfy. It's so, so soft. And do, do, do. Okay, so I just needed the brown for the very end. So it's just on one side. But I kind of like it. That little pop of brown to contrast with the rest of it. So that's the cowl. It's just um, single crochet. I made a chain long enough to hit uh, my hips basically and then crocheted until I ran out of yarn. And the nice thing about crocheting is you can really crochet until you end or until you run out of yarn and not have to worry about binding off, which is why I chose to crochet this instead of knit it and also I don't have appropriate sized um, circulars. I could have just knit like a short, or not a short, but a wide strip and then grafted it or whatever at the end, but that's not what I wanted to do. So this is, yeah, it was really, really simple. It's very soft, very squishy. I like it a lot. Works in progress. I have been working diligently on the Pippin Socks by Claire Ellen. This is where I was last week, where the stitch marker is, and I am now finished with the legs and through the gusset. Mara has been a terror this morning, so I started recording and my needle was at the beginning of the round and then she threw a fit, so while she was throwing a fit I started knitting and now I'm in I've gone across the top of one foot. And this is what it's looking like. It's very beautiful. I love this yarn. It is Spartacus Dyes. Doo -doo. Here's the tag. Spartacus Dyes. Spray for Man Sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% silk in the cotton candy colorway. The yarn, um, the yarn, the needles are US size 1, 2.25 millimeter and it's working up great. I am now to the easy peasy part because I'm through the gusset, which means I don't have to worry about gusset decreases and I can just zoom to the toe. So these will be finished next week. <sighs> they will be finished next week. I have also been working on a project that and my only other really active whip is a project that I hadn't started last week but I told you I was going to. These are Cecilia's Christmas socks. I took them with me to all of the things this week so they have a decent amount of progress. There we go. 
I am through the just plain stockinette portion and I have started the first ribbing section and my plan, we'll see how it goes. My plan is to write this tube sock pattern up this afternoon barring a complete meltdown by my daughter because I had plans to record this episode over an hour ago and I had to deal with her a lot. So we'll see. I'm hoping to get the pattern written up. I won't use any test knitters. I'll just post it to Ravelry and I will be sure to post it in whatever episode thread it happens around so that people can see that and know. Um, yeah, the yarn I should probably tell you about is drops yarn and it is color 161 and it is sock yarn I'm imagining I don't know how to pronounce that someone who speaks oh I don't know is that German should tell me please do I don't know I'm total fail with uh, with languages but these socks are not lined up. I pulled out the yarn, cast on, and went to town because I didn't know how long the pattern repeat was going to be. And it turns out that they're only off by a little bit. But I like it. And if Cecilia doesn't like them not matching, she can make her own socks next time. I don't, I don't think she'll care. I like them. And they're about halfway finished, which means that I am approximately halfway through my children's sock knitting quota for Christmas. Yay! My sock yarn blanket received some love this week. These five are all yarns that I use to make projects. So this is the Knit Picks Sorbet Malty. Um, was this the Knit Picks striping yarn? Simple Stripes, I think. This is Premier Serenity Sock in Forest Lawn, I think. That might be wrong. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. This is the Wisdom Yarns Marathon Sock. And I don't remember the colorway. And this is Nooch Fiber Mid town or morning side sock in hobbitses and then the other side these four are zk yarns so look i have only this part in the middle to fill in and then my blanket is finished i'm up to 745 squares out of 776 getting so close to finished if I did one square a day, I would be finished before the end of November. Maybe I can do it. I don't know. I seem to be either doing a ton of squares per week or no squares per week. <sighs> Completely doable to finish this blanket by the end of the year, though. I'm going to try. I'm going to try so hard. I finished reading City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. And it was okay. I'm going to finish reading the series, but I'm not, it's not one of those series where I'm like, I need the next book right now. It's, it's pretty good. I don't love the writing style, but I do really, really like some of the characters a lot. And there are some great lines in this book and great sections, but overall the writing is kind of, it's okay. It's not great. The story is pretty good. The concept behind the story is pretty good. It's a, if you like young adult fantasy type, like urban fantasy, young adult urban fantasy. Okay, so the problem is I just don't love urban fantasy as a general genre. I just don't. So that's probably why I'm like, mm, it's okay, but it's not great. There are a, 
a few urban fantasy books that I really enjoy, but overall it's just not a genre I like. But if you like urban fantasy and you like young adult, then I would recommend this. It's pretty good. I just don't love urban fantasy. That's all. But I'll be reading the other, I don't know, few books in the series. There are four books in total. Nope, five. Because this is, um, this is not pictured on the back of this book. So five books in the series, maybe. Maybe a sixth because I saw something in the library about the conclusion. So I don't know if these, these books are all of the ones in the series. We'll see. I'll be picking that up from the library sometime soonish. Maybe on Wednesday because I don't have any more books on books from the library after the one that I'm reading right now and I don't think it will take me very long. This book is Princess of the Midnight Ball and it is by Jessica Day George and I love books based on fairy tales. This book is based on the 12 Dancing Princesses. It takes place in a kingdom that is based on, I think it's um, early 19th century Germany. Let's see. Yeah, early 19th century. Well, it's not based on, but it is very similar to early 19th century Germany. And I am on page 50 out of 300 something. <gasps> 272. I read 50 pages last night. I just, uh, I flipped through the back of the book and I didn't know that this existed. Okay. The main male character, Knits, if you watched Swift Knits, she talked about this book, I think. She definitely Instagrammed about it. The main male character, Nitz, he is a soldier uh, just coming back from the war that just ended. And he knits scarves and he knit a girl a shawl once and he knits socks and he alludes to being able to patch tents and stuff via like fiber crafting. Love it. And I didn't know this until right now when I was looking to see how many pages. But look, there are knitting patterns in the back of this book. They look really simple. I don't know what they're for because I, I'm not actually reading them, but I'm excited because it seems like knitting will play a pretty big part in rescuing the princes, which is princesses, which is what happens in 12 Dancing Princesses. So I'm excited. And she has a few other books that sound like they are based on fairy tales, based on the titles. So maybe you'll be seeing, hearing more about her. Um, I like it so far, but I'm only 50 pages in. So I, there's not a lot to to talk about yet, except that I enjoy the writing style. Reading 50 pages was really, really easy. And I kept telling myself, okay, I really need to go to sleep. And then I was like, but just one more chapter, just one more. Stayed up too late reading those 50 pages. I, it was too late when I started reading the book really. And now we've reached the Potiversary information. Are you excited? I'm excited. The Potiversary, there will be a thread open by the time this goes up. The drawing for the prizes will be on November 17th, 2014. And to enter for prizes, my question prompty thing um, is actually multiple questions, but I would like to know what you do while you're watching my podcast or any podcast. Some people knit, but some people clean or I sometimes design patterns or write up patterns. 
not recently, but in the past, while I am listening to podcasts, like I will have, um, I'll have the podcast window here on my screen and then my pattern here so that I can glance over at the podcast when someone's like, and here's my thing. I don't usually watch like zero in on the screen when I'm watching podcasts. I'm always doing something else. I can't just sit and watch anything. Um, so what do you do while you're watching? What have you, like specifically what kinds, what projects have you worked on? I would love to see photos of finished objects or works in progress or whatever. I would love to see photos. Um, and you can always say, I would really like if you showed this on the podcast, like suggestions for me or questions you have for me or any of that. So you have to, you have to in some way answer one of those prompts. So what do you do while watching specific finished objects or works in progress that you work on while or have worked on while watching or suggestions or questions or any of that or all three or something else. I don't know. I'm not really that picky on what you post in there as long as there's some sort of conversational thing. And then also your choice of what you would like because there are four prizes and you can enter for all four or you can say, I don't actually want any of them. I just want to give you feedback or any combination of those four. So the prizes for the Potiversary. The first is a skin of yarn. This is from the Mean Girls Yarn Club and I will post a picture because I think it's a little washed out. Of course it always looks different when I'm editing so maybe it's perfect. It is called Bunny Boiler. It is from the Mean Girls Yarn Club episode 5 Attack of the Horse. Bunny Boiler. There's the tag and this was donated by Diane. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, do you want to know what, what the base is? Probably right. It is 100% merino wool superwash sock, about 560 yards. That's a lot of yardage. The next prize is this lovely set of Amy Eyes. I promise it's Amy Eyes, but I don't know where I put the tag because I wanted two pair or I wanted purple eyes for the panda that I made for my sister for her birthday and Lucas had two options and I was like mm, I can't really tell which one would go better with the with the panda so I received both and this is the pair that was not used so it's kind of a pinky purpley color it's got sparkles I have the backs I don't know if these, um, I don't know where the tag is, so I can't tell you the name and all of that. They are smaller, so I think they are nine millimeter eyes. Information will be in the thread. So those lovely eyes. And then I have a set of stitch markers. It's five stitch markers, red, orange, yellow, green, blue and a chain that you can wear around your neck and it has this large clasp that I will try to manipulate out of the chain so you can wear these stitch markers or any other stitch markers around. And these are from tanyamcguire.com. And you might remember that I won these in the... Um, to fleece maybe I think and I just haven't used them so I figured why not pass it along it would be much better for someone to use them for them than for them to sit in my drawer for who knows how long and the final prize is 
Actually, I'm going to do two additional prizes. So five prizes total. I had planned this and then I got the number wrong in my head. So the fourth prize is I will make you something using stash yarn. Um, like a pair of socks or a shawlette or, you know, a, a skein of yarn, basically. And the final prize is a pattern from my pattern shop. And since this is happening mid-November, I should have a few, maybe not a few, a couple more patterns available. The, um, the shawl, a cog in the machine will be available for that purpose. So yeah, go give feedback and make sure to let me know what prize you're interested in. Much like last year's prize drawing, I will record your, um, your choices in the back of my notebook numerically by who responds first, and then I will draw from those lists, excuse me, um, instead of drawing from the thread because I would like people to be able to discuss other people's comments. Like if you, if someone finished something while watching a podcast and it's amazing and you want to tell them that it's amazing, I want you to be able to just tell them that it's amazing instead of thinking it. So feel free to chatter in that thread. I will keep track of everybody's requests for prize-ness and that will all be drawn on November 17th. Of course, you must be a member of the group to enter. And you will have to watch the podcast because I'm not going to PM if you win. I'll mention it on the podcast. You'll have a month to get back to me. And if you don't get back to me within that month, I will mention it one final time. You'll have a week to get back to me. And then if you don't get back to me, I will redraw. I think that system works really well. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. Thank you so much for watching. I am super excited to have almost made it to two years of recording, and I will see you next week. Bye!